What's up everybody? I'm working on two videos at once today and this is the intro for the Fortnite video. So what I'm gonna do is take some blank steel sheets. So this is steel sent to me by my good friend Jeremy over at HTL Holsters. I'll link his YouTube channel in the description. But these are nice steel blanks. I've prepped them and they are ready to go. And what we're gonna do is put the new Fortnite map on there. What's new or what's old is new. So we have the Fortnite season four uh, or chapter four season OG map engraved on this piece of steel. This is my test piece and I did double-sided. So I'm just gonna go over some settings on how I was able to get this image to come out on steel and look pretty darn good. You'll notice one side has the Fortnite that has a blue tint to it and the other side, you see it, it'll have the gold. But overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out, especially just pulling an image from the web because you typically don't get that great of images unless you're specifically searching for a 4K image. But um, we just take it into Photoshop, do a quick adjustment, and then bring it back into Lightburn. And then a couple more adjustments in Lightburn, burn the image. And then with the graphics here, are these vector files, you just choose what color you want them to be based on your laser and settings and the steel that you have, and then you just uh, finish it up. But without further ado, let's just jump right into the software and see what we gotta do to get these images to turn out the way we want. I'll at least get you pointed in the right direction to get a decent image on your first try. Okay, so I got the image that I downloaded from the internet and brought it into Photoshop. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of the background so we don't need the water surrounding the island. So with Photoshop, I just use the one touch to remove background tool. And that makes it pretty easy. Then the next thing you need to do is based on your laser and lens combination size, need to figure out what DPI you're gonna be running your project at. So for me, I'm running at a 0 0.05 line interval, which is 508 DPI. And then what we'll do is go back into Photoshop, go to image, image size. Then what we're gonna do is change our resolution to 508. It's going to make an extremely large file size. However, I do know that in millimeters, we only need 115 millimeter wide graphic. So that's going to make it a more reasonable 15 megabytes. So at this point, just hit OK. It will resize that image for you. And then you do File, Save As. And I like to save it as a PNG. And we'll just save it as a PNG. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna replace it. I'll just hit yes. Save as large file size. It's the fastest saving. I have plenty of space, so I don't have to worry about it. And at that point, that's all we have to do in Photoshop is make the DPI match what we're gonna run it in Lightburn. And here I already have the image brought into Lightburn. I'm gonna bring it in again. Okay, so there's our Fortnite map. Now, what I'm wanting to show you in particular is the image adjustments that I make. You can probably tell that the color is a little different, a little different color, it's a little lighter. Um, Go to adjust image. This is going to be ran with Atkinson. What we're going to do is lower the contrast just a little bit and increase the brightness. 
and then adjust the gamma. Typically down a little bit. And based on a couple tests, I found that this ended up being a pretty nice engrave. It's a negative 33 and 0.85. Now, Jeremy at HTML Holsters, I have stole a little bit of his tricks, and he does an enhanced radius of 50 and an amount of 200, I believe. And then he also changes this to threshold. Nope, sorry. So one of Jeremy's tricks is to switch it to half tone and change your sales branch to 200. Then at that point, you can switch back to Atkinson and it'll keep that 200. Another trick of his, which I've saved as Jeremy's perfect picture, is to change your enhanced radius to 20 and enhance amount to 50. That's what Jeremy typically runs. So I wanted to share that with you. And for this particular image, uh, yep, his perfect picture is negative three and three. That is actually what I ran this time. I did have my gamma just a little bit different, but that's okay. It was only uh, a small difference. And there we end up with the colors on the images looking almost identical, just a slight gamma, gamma shift. Then I just collected some graphics and assigned them to different layers. And with these different layers, I have different settings that will produce different colors with the laser. So whatever color you would like to make your graphic, just assign that. Whatever color you would like to make your steel, just assign that to your graphic. And then you can run these separate. You can run the image first or you can run it last. You can run these graphics first or run them last, whatever you want to do. I also made this little circle up here so I can use it as a point to start a pilot hole. So if I want to drill a hole in it to hang it on the wall, then I'll have it marked perfect center. Then I also have this layer here, excuse me, this one, the green layer that I use where everything's framed up and nice. So I'll use this to frame my piece of steel so that I make sure that it is centered and the graphics fit on there as I expect them to. But that's everything in Lightburn. I will share with you. I'm not going to share with you my settings because this is a 120 watt fiber laser source. Most people don't have those. These settings will absolutely not apply to what you're doing. So you're gonna to have to find your steel settings on your own and then put those settings into Lightburn. But there's just some quick tips on adjusting the graphic. So now that the graphic is adjusted, I'll just go over to the laser camera and we'll get this fired up. So you can watch the engrave, I'll speed it up. It should only take about 20 minutes for the graphic there for the image and then in a few minutes for the graphics and I'll just run through those, let it engrave it and then run it fast forward for you.
Okay, we do have our finished picture. We have the gold highlights in the Fortnite, and then we do have some color in the lower graphics. I just did some random settings just to see exactly what would happen, and we kind of got a mix of uh, some rainbow colors going on. But I want to show you how to finish these. They, they will rust. This is steel, it will rust. Uh, I prepped this earlier today. You can prep it a couple different ways. You can just sand it, you can sand it, then laser it with a cleaning pass, or you can just use a cleaning pass. I sanded this and then went over it with a cleaning pass. And that gives me a really nice canvas to work with. So it turns out pretty clean. But how you prep your steel is up to you. So we have this and we can make it look even better and make it look like this and keep it from rusting. So that is a win-win. And the only thing we need is some Rust-Oleum triple thick glaze. So I'm going to go spray this with triple thick glaze, bring the glaze can back in here and show you what it looks like. And I'll leave a link to buy it on Amazon in the description, which is where I buy it if I don't feel like going to hunt at Walmart or in Lowe's and see if they have it in stock. And for those of you that we're probably thinking, man, he didn't give me any settings. Well, if you stuck around this far, I have a treat for you. I'm gonna give you some settings that if you have a 50 or 60 watt, there will be a great place for you to start in trying to do photos on steel. So what you're going to wanna to do is run a speed of about 100, a power about 30. Uh, if you can do it, you run a frequency of 60 and a Q pulse around 175. If you just if you don't have a MOPA, then you're running a Q pulse at 200, so you can adjust your frequency a little bit to make up for it. So you just increase your frequency. Uh, and then I am running a line interval of 0 0.05 with a 200 millimeter lens. So if you have a smaller lens, run a smaller line interval. 300 millimeter lens larger line interval. Uh, but those settings should get you in the ballpark to start doing photos on steel. And um, yeah, I just thought this was really cool. This was my son's idea. He is 13 and is trying to help me come up with ideas that are topical and with the release of, what was it? Chapter four, season OG. Uh, this just a couple days ago he thought this would be a really cool idea for a video so I thought let's use his idea and make a video all right I'm gonna spray this I'll be right back all right I am back and you'll see that with the triple thick glaze you do get that nice shine on there it brightens up uh, the engravings and uh, makes it look pretty classy and this is the Rust-Oleum Triple Thick right here. I'll leave a link in the description. This stuff is amazing. You can use it on metal, wood, whatever you want. Uh, you can use it on painted wood and it makes it look like acrylic or glass. Again, here's the ones I ran earlier and then here's the one I just ran. And they look very good with the Triple Thick. One thing uh, to make sure you do, before you do spray it with triple thick, spray it with alcohol, wipe it off real good, get all the oil and everything off your steel, then spray it with this triple thick. Otherwise you will not get even coating that won't want to stick in spots that are oily. That's, uh, that's my triple thick tip for today. And let's see, I think that's it. That's all for this video. Thank you to my son for recommending that I do this video project. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you uh, to my patrons for allowing me to purchase these steel supplies from Jeremy and do all this testing and make these videos. I appreciate it. Thank you to Jeremy for giving me the steel at a great price and um, 
sharing some of the stuff you were doing with your photos because he's doing a hell of a job. Check the link in the description for his channel. And thank you to everyone who tuned in, made it this far. I appreciate you watching um, more than you know. So I just wanted to let you know that. And I guess that's it for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Look for some leatherette on the diode coming up next. Have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.